All right, friends, today is the day. We're gonna take this thing out and see if it won't shell a little bit of corn. So we'll get going on that right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Aller Man. This is the cheapest come mine I ever bought. 7300 gas and it should be ready to roll. I uh, had trouble yesterday with the battery wanting to start once it got cold and windy. So I've had it cooking all night down here and I think it should be ready to roll. Uh, it does remind me though, I have a couple of things I need to do to it. I need to get a screwdriver and I have a hose clamp to put on that air intake which is missing and then screw the one back down to the carburetor and then I might try to give it a few shots of grease here and there so we'll drive it up there where that stuff's at and then uh, we'll take care of it but I have high hopes that we've went through about everything and there's not much left that could bite us but I'm sure we'll find something still a lot more we can do to it like make better battery cables and get the whole shebang worked out but for now that'll do I did find one part of my starting problem is in the connection between the uh, there's that relay under the hood Ooh. It almost fired immediately up. Wow. greased as much as I wanted to so that's good into something that's just for a play time what well, we probably should but step one is let's hope we make it there road gear
let's find out. Oh, I killed it. <laughs> oh, silly me. I had it too far down in an aisle. That's about right. You see what's going to happen now? I'm all the way out here and... Are you serious? That's nuts. I'm thinking it's not meant to be, folks. I mean, that's ridiculous. Now I get to walk back up to the house and get a pickup or something. I tell you what, this is just nonsense. <laughs> Why am I even doing this? All right, I'm not much into Black Friday shopping, but I stopped at a store yesterday when I was at that ball game and I saw those and I thought, hey, I probably should get a set. Little did I know, 24 hours later, I would be using them. So yeah. Okay. What a lot of work for a bunch of nonsense. belt is about to leave us. Alright. Well that's going to be a potential issue. Lots of head loss. Let's take a look at the rest of the machine. Pretty 
pretty good on that too. jumping off so that we're gonna have to figure out I'm wondering if there's a bearing out in there it looks like it's got some play to it shell because I want to play with my picker too. I should have left more but that ain't a bad pile for six rows so should have probably left my auger up on the bin and put it in there. So what have we learned? Well we learned we're gonna have to fix that auger for next year because it's pretty rough. That ain't nothing new on these. I'm impressed by how clean of a sample it made. <coughs> I think it did a better job than my 545. I'm sure there is stuff that needs attention, but overall, I mean, it's doing the job. And I was worried about the row spacing because it is an odd one. It's like I wanted to say it was like 36. <clears throat> These are planted on 38s, but it went through there with no trouble. It uh, leaned them over a little bit in places, but that ain't no big thing. Uh, it's just gonna need little tender love and care things here and there uh, to make it perfect. But I think it would have shelled a lot more. I mean, I guess uh, 
if the picker messes up we'll bring this back out here and go again but i think i'm gonna call it here and uh at least you got to see it a little bit i guess it's not as big a deal for me because i run one of these for years i ran two of them actually one for corn and one for soybeans and i spent many many hours in one of these and i've had them almost totally completely disassembled over the course of that time whenever they needed something so uh yeah 7300 combine they're fun to operate although if you're in a time crunch i don't know that that is uh what i'd want to do anymore at this point but yeah I guess we'll drive it back up there and I'll try to unload it in a wagon. We haven't tried the unloader system, so we'll try that and see what happens. That may be where the sadness is. <clears throat> if it won't unload out of the auger, we can open that door on the bottom and unload it in, into uh, another auger on the ground. But anyway, let's drive it back up there and hope we make it. I guess whilst before we do that I have the thresher part running they have two levers so you can declutch the head or you know what I mean if you have the thresher running you can shut the head off and whatever so that when you're on the ends your head's not screaming all the time but you can let the machine finish but here you can see how it works there's that grain pan shaking back and forth <coughs> As the material comes in here, the cylinder is back in there under that cover. And uh, well, we'll go around the other side and you can get a better idea of how this goes. So the corn comes in up the feeder house. This is the cylinder shaft. So in there is a cylinder and it's on top of that concave and the grain gets fed between it and it just peels the corn off basically that's the thing that some people don't understand about these cylinder combines you see them and they've got corn that's just busted open you don't have to grind it in there just set it where it just rubs the corn off of the ear or off of the cob i should say <laughs> and so it does that it falls down through onto that grain pan and it shakes it the trash gets thrown up on top of the straw walkers and it heads out the back grain is heavier so it falls down and it goes down and that's when it comes back here it falls off the end of the grain pan which is the other end of that shaker deal there and falls down in there like i said the other day clean grain elevator is right there spinning and then it augers it to the other side puts it up in your grain tank if it makes it farther than that across those chaffers it ends up in the return grain elevator and goes back up for re-threshing there you can see some of how all of this goes but that whole assembly shakes as one of the uh, chaffers and that and it falls down through to those other augers and then basically that's how the machine works this is all your variable speed drive for your ground travel long belt comes from the motor to this variable speed unit which has a hydraulic system on it that squeezes that pulley the front half of it has a uh, big spring and then it matches whatever you're doing to change your ground speed bigger to smaller pulleys as you pull the lever and then basically that's how she goes i mean that's just a paddle elevator that takes it up to the grain tank dumps it in there and it's got a leveling auger on top and then when you're ready to empty these two are cross augers that pull the corn over here and dump it into the main auger so you can go out and your drive system for that is all here so we'll test that out here in a minute to see if it goes And then of course your fan i guess i didn't talk about that but you can see it over here 
it blows a blast of air through there to try to carry some of the lightweight trash out like that stuff that got sucked up on the screen there uh, and it's variable speed too you can adjust it and it's got a spring pulley and it'll change its speed every turn of the crank is what one R, uh, 10 rpm so <coughs> and then if you want to change speeds for crops you can pull that sprocket off and then there's different ones and you shorten your chain the one behind there i believe is 45 tooth from the factory you could change it if you want a different combination of speeds but most of the time i never did that i just left it to the 45 one and changed it up here and that works but anyway a neat little machine that was headed for the scrapyard if i hadn't saved it so let's go try the unloader all right we'll unload into this wagon oliver wagon oliver combine this is an armstrong auger so you have to pull it out by hand This brace rod will go up in the grain tank, but we need to, uh, I don't think it's lined up right in there. I'm going to have to put you down because I can't do this. Then very sophisticatedly, you put a bolt through it to hold it together. However, I guess I got a bigger bolt than what it takes. My other one, this is what will fit through there. This one is just enough to tick you off. Okay, I'm not sure about this setup because that's not at all the way my other ones are. I'll have to look in the book and see if this was factory. I don't think it was. That'll hold there. That other one goes there. Huh. Consequently, here's your door for the top of your straw walkers. When you plug up the combine, you'll be going in there digging out. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay. Got on there. There. They must have been worried about that going away. Factory, I think, just has that one rod. That's the way my others are. Now, to unload, you pull up on this handle, and if you turn it one way or the other, it shuts off those cross augers, but I don't know. Let's give her some... that that is the amount of corn that came off of six rows in one direction so that's good I need to get that trash pulled out of there but anyway uh, 
<laughs> what are you gonna say? I mean, it works. It did a good job. I think that's a pretty livable sample. This last part, it found a bird's nest in there somewhere. That was, that was probably what made it squeal when it started. Uh, this is a monstrous unloading auger on these, really, diameter-wise. I want to say that it's like 10 inch. I can't remember. I have to measure it. Uh, but anyway, what I'm saying is, you get one shot at it, in my experience. When you start it up, if you can't empty the whole grain tank and you shut it off with corn in that auger, you ain't going to get it started again. You're going to have to open it up and let some out because it cannot overcome the weight of that corn pushing down. Maybe not so much on these little ones, but on that 545, it's got an auger that's twice this long. And uh, yeah, you will uh, have some corn in there. So you got to have somewhere to dump it where you know you can get it all in one shot. But that's just my experience with it. But I'm pretty happy with it. <coughs> now, of course, there's going to be days of cleaning it all up because I'm going to have to blow that out of there or it's going to get rotten so and ruin the metal but anyway yeah if it wasn't for a bird nest that would be a pretty nice pile of corn so yeah well friends there you have it the cheapest combine that we managed to get hauled up here and we brought back from non-running and it's made it to the field and it has shelled some corn and it did a great job so hopefully next year we can make it a little bit better and play with it some more now that we know we got a lot of it dialed in uh you know we got some other things to fix patching and stuff and make better and probably redo that grain pan patch maybe but i don't see why this little thing wouldn't shell you know 10 acres of corn easy it didn't even break a sweat and it did a great job and like i said i used these for years this is i used that red 7300 for beans and the 545 for corn because it was one straw walker wider it was a big bigger combine that was a corn eating machine there so i want to get both of them back to going too i still need a snout for that 500 series corn head which is different than these this is a 700 series corn head so if you have a snout for a 500 series corn head let me know anyway the gopro cut me off but like i was saying if you know where there's a snout for a 500 series corn head i'd be interested because i uh could use some parts for that 545 and then maybe next year we could see both of them out there and if i get really motivated i could get that red one going and put the 40 head on it and we could have three combines going but that's asking an awful lot of my motivation i got a lot of quit in me so anyway i think this was fun this was the appropriate amount of not working too awfully hard and still enjoying myself, so good deal. But as always, if you like the videos, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up button. That stuff doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.